Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of this series on preparing the Curse of Strahd for the Shattered Ark campaign. Um, Strahd of the Ark, as they're calling it these days. So, yeah, last session um, was session two. We've had session zero, session one, now session two. Um, and so our next one, which will be tomorrow, is going to be session three. So I'm doing part three of this series uh, today. Last session did not go as I thought it would. Not in, uh, it was really fun. It was awesome. But they spent the whole time basically talking. <laughs> uh, they didn't do the church, or at least they haven't done it yet. They have plans for it, um, but they haven't actually set out for it. They, they basically, uh, when we started last session, they were in Dr. Maxim's. They finished off with that. They rushed over to Ismark and Irina's and then talked to them for basically the entire session. Uh, and... Uh, Ismark, uh, Irina had been basically sedated uh, since her attack or off and on since her attack by Dr. Maxim who wanted her rest. Um, and Ismark was, it just had not slept in that entire time. And so he was kind of wild and desperate and, and forgetful and out of it, um, trying to protect his sister, you know, deal with his dead father <laughs> and uh, help the town um, all at the same time uh, and, and unable to do really any of it. So they, they basically talked to him and got his point of view about things, which wasn't terribly helpful at first because he was really, really um, confused and out of it. And, but, but they convinced him to let them help him. And they, I, so at least one of the players has started the Curse of Strahd before, and obviously I've changed a lot, and he, he recognizes that. But he knows that Ismark and Irina are important in the campaign. And so I think he kind of, without trying to, I think he was like tending to like, okay, these are the people we need to be around. And so once they met them, he was really kind of all in on helping them and protecting Irina and all this stuff. So in character, it, it was kind of strange that they sort of invited themselves in and they were like, hey, we want to help this guy and, and kind of spend all day and all night helping this guy and his sister, which, you know, in a town where there's lots of bad stuff happening, um, doesn't necessarily make a ton. I mean, like, you know, they just single, why single these particular people out? But I think it made sense in terms of, you know, that there's a, there's a, there was an attack. And so the, uh, Pavel, the beast recognized that as something related to what happened to him. And so he had a connection there. Um, Ismark and Iria, Is Ismark's the new burgomaster there. I, I just described their house as you know, kind of more nobility. And so I think the noble felt a connection there. Um, and the other two players went along with it because the other two kind of led the charge. Um, so it made enough sense in character for them to do it. And out of character, I think at least one of them was kind of pushing for them this to be the new focus. So rather than go to the church, rather than go back to the Blood of the Vine, where they had rented rooms, rather than go back to Mary's or investigate the Mercantile, which were the other leads I had led. You know, they didn't even really talk about going down into the well to investigate the uh, the, the poisoning um, or talk to Doru, who was kind of, or try to talk to Doru, who's crazy. Uh, they just spent the entire session here. Now, as I said, it was super fun. It was really, really thematic. I, I, I switched into kind of like build dread mode. And so I described how it was very clear that their servants had abandoned them and they had kind of looted the house and things were dark and there were a handful of candles left and it was raining. And so there was this sort of gloom and darkness even in the middle of the day when they got there. And, uh, and of course, then there was the sitting room where the old Burgomaster's body was still in repose and no one was kind of daring to go in there. Ismark hadn't gone in there since... since uh, for at least several days, and so the smell was starting to grow. They had burned incense there, so there was this, this faint scent of decay beneath this incense. So it was really, really creepy. Even this otherwise nice house, the shadows everywhere and, and potentially risks everywhere. And so basically they decided that they were going to try to help him sleep through the night. And then the next day he had asked them, once Irina was well enough, they would take her to Velaki. That was the that was sort of the initial plan. That was what he worked out with them. Uh, he wanted to stay and help his town until the bitter end, but um, but they convinced him not to leave immediately, but that he needed to sleep, and that she was still sedated, and so she couldn't really travel. And so that night, Doctor Maxim came and he tried to do it again, and then they kind of stopped him. And basically, they just kept watch. So they set up sort of like alarms by some of the doors and windows. They set up like you know tin pots attached to strings that if the windows were open, that they would clank and alert people and they slept in strategic locations to kind of see down hallways and to hide in shadows and just camped out there all day a couple of them slept during the day and then all night and a couple of them slept during the night um 
So the only thing of note, besides a lot of role-playing, uh, there were two things that happened that I think were, were interesting. Well, three. Dr. Maxim's uh, visit was kind of cool because I think one of the players is starting to be suspicious of him, uh, especially when I described how he was pretty insistent on Irina being sedated like over and over. And he was like, why is this? Why? She doesn't seem to be in danger. She's not feverish. Why do you want her out of it? Um, and so he's putting things together, I think. And at this point, I'm pretty clearly leaning into Dr. Maxim's been compromised by being charmed by Gertruda. And so he doesn't really know necessarily what he's doing. His head isn't terribly clear. And he can't think terribly straight, but he is doing more or less her bidding at this point. And she's doing the bidding of Rahada. Okay, so um, that night, um, I had this timeline that I developed, um, Future Events. Um, is future events in Barovia should the party not alter fate? Um, and so I had kind of what's what's going on through here, and then I have what's going to happen here. So um, that night, which is the night that they were there, um, Sorvia is attacked by zombies. Her screams can be heard from the inn, but not from where they were staying, really. So Sorvia was attacked that night, and I had the two people who were on watch, I had them roll to see if they heard anything. And one of them... Yeah, so it was... Kind of funny, because, um, I mean, it wasn't funny, it was just, uh, I had them roll to see if they heard anything that night, and both of them rolled, like, below six or something. It was real low. So, um, so they didn't hear it. They heard, I said that they heard something, like a yelp or something from the street late in the middle of the night, but they didn't hear any follow-up. So, Sorvia is just dead. I think that's what's, what's happening, is that she's dead. And, I, and I'm going to change it so that she's not attacked by zombies. Um, she was attacked by Father Donovich. So she's, uh, she's going to be a, um, uh, so she is definitely turned into a, uh, um, what they call a feral vampire now. So that, the next night, Sorvia will, will be visiting her sisters. So it's, it's, like, I want them to get that sense of, uh-oh, if, if this starts to happen, it starts to spread really quickly, right? Because now Sorvia and Father Donovich and Gertruda... Donovich and Sorvia are kind of feral, but Gertruda isn't, and so she can be more um, restrained in her in her uh, attacks. But Donovich and uh, Sorvia are going to like turn the people that they turn into vampires every time. Now, that's the way the Shadow Dark vampires work, right? Is if your Constitution goes score goes to zero as a result of their drain attack, then you simply become a feral vampire. So that's going to start spreading, and they're going to have to deal with that um, because that's going to become apparent. So now Sorvia is a feral vampire, or will be the next night. So I'm going to add that in the next night down here. So Sorbia is attacked by Father Donovich, um, so she's not saved. Um, I can delete some of this. So uh, I will add in what's going on. Uh, Mad Mary is visited by Gertrude again and is drained near to death. She's so weak she can't get up. So that happened as well. Um, the players didn't have any, indic any indication of that, though. They're going to hear about it the next day. And then the last that did happen, the other interesting thing I thought, was that the characters, and it ended up being uh, Varya, she rolled off while she was sleeping and she rolled the lowest. Uh, she dreamed about she dreamt about Velaki. And so I described how she was wandering through these really narrow streets of a town she didn't know with buildings that were towering over her, uh, looming over her. And I described how she, it was, a, it was, you know, she felt that she had to do something, but she couldn't remember what it was. And so she's, she could see figures in the dark they were always out of sight, and uh, she was wandering and wandering and wandering, and finally she finds this town center where there are banners and, um, you know, pendants of a celebration that ended in tragedy, and she knew that it was sorrowful, and then the figure stepped in, and she could see that they were all smiling, very frozen, creepy, huge, wide grins, um, and then I had, through the crowd, break through this woman, and I have a picture of her. She doesn't know who it is. I know it's Stella Wachter, but... Um, but I just showed her the picture and she cries out, all is not well and wakes her up. And that's when she woke up. And what's really great about that is that the player really role played it really well. But also I had forgotten this when I was describing the scene. She talked about one of her character's phobias was being enclosed. She had, you know, she's, she's, she's afraid of tight spaces and of being. So, um, but when I was describing the buildings looming over her, towering over her, like pressing her down, um, she was like, wow, that would be perfect as a nightmare for my character. And it was afterwards, we talked about it. And I totally had forgotten that. So it was great. It kind of worked out. So she wakes up in a sweat um, and goes out onto the balcony and just lets the night air kind of coolly refresh her. Um, 
And then in the morning, what happened was uh, um, because the doctor hadn't given Irina the, the drug that night, um, Irina gets up ready to go. And she's ready to go find who killed her father. Oh, that was another thing that happened that night, too. I forgot. Was the priest character decided he was going to go pray in front of the... Uh, the dead burgomaster. So he went in there and I described this, you know, how it was all dark and there was this very low burning fire and um, the smell of rot was hidden by the incense, but you could still smell it. And he comes around and I describe how his eyes are still wide open, just staring at you. And the player was pretty creeped out. He was like, that is creepy. Um, and so I had the character roll for stress and he took like four stress right there. And he was like, oh no. Um, and so then he closed his eyes and put coins on them and like said his prayers. And then when everybody else came in later, the coins were there. And so he, he, they didn't have to take that stress. No. But it was a great moment because he comes around the corner. It's this really creepy, dark sitting room with the fire crackling, the shadows playing on the walls. And then he sees this corpse with its eyes staring right at him. It was a great little bit of foreshadowing, right? The dead rising. Um, of course, uh, he's not, he's not going to turn into a vampire because he was attacked and killed by a, by a, um, a werewolf. But it was a not in werewolf form. The guy just killed him. So he, he's not... Uh, actually a werewolf yet because again in in uh, shadow dark you have to take i think 11 damage maybe 12 from a single source of of to of lycanthropy to contract it and so these are you know level one commoners basically they have like eight you know four hit points so they can't contract it unless something were unless i kind of want them to, to contract it through the story mechanically speaking they wouldn't contract it uh, and i just described that they just killed him right they just killed him so so he's not going to come back. He's just dead. Okay, so, but then, so they had that dream, and then the next morning, Irina came down, and, and Irina and Ismark, he got to sleep all night, and so he was refreshed and ready to go, and they basically started arguing immediately because he wants her to go to Velaki because he thinks she's in danger, which she is, and she doesn't care. She wants her father buried, and then she wants to find his murderer. That's the first thing. And so the one thing they could agree on is that they wanted their father buried, but there's a, the superstitions in Barovia and Ismark is pretty superstitious. Well, not superstitious. I mean, it actually is pretty accurate. <laughs> but he and Irina both are religious in the, in the Barovian way and they won't, they don't want their father buried unless there's the proper prayers prayed over him. And of course, those prayers come from a book which is in the church. So that gives them a reason to go now into the church for this next session. In fact, that's what they were planning on doing is, um, okay, now we have, a, we have to go investigate the church, get the book, uh, come back, bury, uh, bury him. And then the other thing is that now that Irene is awake, she has identified at least this about her attacker, that her attacker was a Vistani. Was a Vistana, I should say. One of the Vistani. And so she says, well, then they're obviously, he's, he, the, the people at the Zare Pool will know. And I, Ismark's like, no, we can't just go there. You can't just go to the, the Zare Pool. You know, they'll curse you. They'll, 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 they'll kick you out. They'll be violent. You can't just go there and force yourself in on the, on the Vistani. And she's like, well, we have to try. And so, again, he kind of negotiated with the party and said, okay, fine, Irina will stay behind here with me if you will go and, and investigate this and see if, if, they, if the people there know anything about it. And, uh, and the party agreed, and uh, Irina agreed. So the plan for this next session is for um, the party to go into the church, get the book, then bring it back, bury the old burgomaster, and then the party will go to uh, the Zerpool, well, Ismark and Arias stay back. And then they'll go out, they'll, they'll investigate, then they'll come back to Barovia and then spend that night in town and then the next day go to Velaki. That's the plan currently, which is great because that means they're going to be there all through this day uh, and the next night and then the final day. They won't be there. It's the final night, but they will be there for the final day. So um, they'll be leaving on the final day. So it'll be, it'll be perfect because a lot of the stuff that I had been planning will... I mean, again, if, assuming nothing else changes, and it might change any minute, but just assuming nothing else changes, I have my next session and the next couple sessions planned out probably. Um, and again, I know you don't really want to plan too far ahead because who knows what will happen. Like I had the church already and they didn't go, but now I still have the church and now they're going to go. Okay, so again, 15 minutes of preamble for what I'm going to do today. Um, I have to adjust my future events uh things here. I like to review this before we go, and I'd like to know what will happen if the players do nothing, right? I kind of have what the, what the other characters are doing and what they will do if, if the players don't interfere. And so I get a sense, you know, I know where people will be throughout this time. So what's going to happen the next day now is that um, the two sisters are going to leave, and they're going to leave their sister's body, 
which is going to strike everybody as shocking, but they know uh, Alenka in particular knows the the stories, and they're going to see the signs, and they're just going to get out. Um, now, they might just burn her body. In fact, if I don't think... I'm thinking about this now. I'm going through it. So I was thinking, Sorvia, they might just burn her that night, burn her body. That way she can't come back as a feral vampire um, and because that's a Vistani thing or, or maybe that's a Barovian thing. No, it's not Barovian. I know the Barovians um, bury with a certain ritual. So this will definitely be a, a Vistani thing. They, they burn their dead. And so they might just find a funeral pyre like in the backyard or something um, and they have burned her. And, and left, or they will leave that day. So that will, that's one thing that'll be going on at the, the the blood of the vine is that the two sisters left are going to be burning Sorvia and uh, leaving, and they are not going to invite the players to come with them. So they'll be at the Zerpool Falls probably when the players show up. Maybe the players are going to ask them about it, but they're going to be in no mood to like fraternize or to bring the players with them. Um, you know, th there's no reason for them to do so, especially now that they're in this grief uh, of losing their sister. So that's going to be happening there. Um, Eric will leave and will also not come back. He'll 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 go off, and they might get a sense of they might see him leaving. They might not. Who knows? Um, so Irina is not going to have trouble dreams because she's awake now and she's not all that. So I'll I'll have to change that as well. Maud will show up, so when they come out, they'll see her. They'll see her collecting corpses in her wagon and singing. And so then they can interact with her, I'm sure. Um, and then they're also going to find Vanya uh, crying on the steps of the... Of the uh, on the steps of the... What do they call it? Mercantile. A build with mercantile. And... Um, or maybe they'll be crying from inside, like loud, manly crying. <laughs> and they'll probably assume that it's about Sorvia, but... It, if they do try to investigate, they'll find out that he says Mary is very, very sick, um, that she can't get out of bed. Okay. Um, so that's going to happen there. Uh, they're going to go to the church. They're going to go to the Zerpool Falls. If they don't make it back in time, then Irina is kidnapped and taken to Castle Ravenloft. Um, if she's yeah, if the players have not taken precautions, if they haven't hidden her, if they don't bring her with them, or they don't get back in time, then she's gone. If they do come back in time, then there might be an attack on the house. I don't think there will be, not if the players are there. The guy isn't stupid. But there might there might be a distraction of some sort. Uh, Mary is killed by Gertruda and drained of all of her blood, so that's that. So the final day, if the if, if Irina is there, then they're going to lead to uh, Velaki. Ismark will beg them to do so. Um, if... Ismark has been, if, if, if she's been taken, Irene has been taken, then he's going to be in desperation asking to go back to the, to the Vistani because uh, you know, they'll know more or something. Maybe, they'll, maybe she's been taken there. If they don't help him or they can't or whatever, he's just going to go off and he'll end up being imprisoned and turn into a werewolf in the dungeons of Ravenloft. That's Ismark's fate if he is not otherwise. Actually, that's his fate unless for some reason the players go with him um, because Barovia is dead. Once they leave to Velaki and he's left behind, then that's what's going to happen to him. He's going to be captured, uh, imprisoned, and turned into a werewolf. So Ismark will be uh, trapped in the Dungeons of Ravenloft. But if he goes with them, if, if they, for whatever reason, convince him to leave Barovia town, then he'll, he'll be with them. Uh, Eric doesn't come back. The tavern is left unpacked and empty. Vanya finds Murray dead. Uh, Bildrith, uh, Dr. Maxim goes, and Dr. Maxim will talk to the party. And he's going to be kind of coming out of his, his confusion, starting to realize it's, it's about to be over, and he will tell them, um, what's going on that night? Uh, Mary will rise as a feral vampire and will attack. Probably, you know, she'll go and attack whoever's in town if they're still there at this point. Then the ghosts behind the graveyard will rise and fly to Ravenloft. Uh, the dead in the church attack. Wolves attack. Doctor Mapson is charmed by Gertrude. Probably will take her back to Ravenloft. Doru will be killed. Vanya Bildreth will be killed. Um, Ismark will be taken to the to the town as well. So, so really, this is it. If if, there's, if the players are still in town here, everything goes crazy. But they're probably going to be gone either by uh, the next night or the next, the final day. But but this is the very last night because at that point, everything will go wrong and there will be nothing left to do in Barovia. They'll have to go to Velaki. So that's really the last, the last timeline. All right, so let me change this timeline then. Um, Sorvia was attacked by Father Donovich and killed. Uh, okay, so I can delete that. Sorvia was attacked. Um, so I'm going to say that day. 
there because that's what we have that day. Um, and then oh, I can delete the dream because I know that, and I can delete Mad Mary. Um, so that day, and I'll just delete this stuff. Uh, so I'll say um, this is gone because we know they're not going to worry about that. Um, that day, Vanya bids Mary spends the morning weeping for her loudly. So that's happening. Maj has collected by his corpus. The two sisters. leave after burning Sorvia's body in a pyre behind the tavern. They take the west road to the forest and the Zare falls, Zare Fool falls. Eric goes to visit his brother and see if he can help them pack to leave. Okay, so that all happens that day. Um, the players are going to be doing that. That night, the next night, um, nothing changes. Um, final day. Uh, this has already been told, so Vistani begs the PCs to find her. Um, he demands to accompany them. If the refuser cannot, he goes off on his own as a prisoner to world. Eric fills to the fact. Uh, Vanya finds Mary dead. Tells Bildruth he has to investigate um, strange causes and admit that he is not entirely himself. Um, that night, Mary rises to fail of vampire. All that happens. Uh, the dead in the church attack, and the wolves attack as well. Uh, Dr. Maxim, if left behind, charmed by Gertruda and follows her back to Ravenloft. Doru is killed, as most well of the rest scatter. None make it to Velaki. If Ismark is still here, he is captured, turned into a werewolf, and imprisoned in the dungeons of Ravenloft. Okay, so that's the that's what's going to happen that day, the next night, the next, the final day, the final night. Two days left in Barovia, um, which is definitely not enough time for them to go through the cistern and all that stuff. Okay, um, so I don't know if I have to prepare very much because I know that the church will take some time. Um, I should probably prepare the Zerpool Falls because they're going to want to go there. I don't know if we're going to get to it, but we might. Um, so I'm going to have to add that here. We're going to do a new folder. We're doing Zare Pool Falls. All right, and so I have a couple things here. I have the, the Zare Pool Encampment. I'll put that on there. Um, I had something else that I thought was kind of cool. Where is that? Uh, maybe it's in... Um, yeah, Zare Pool Camp here. It's a cool little like 3D. Yeah, I kind of like that, the Iblis River. So um, it's on the south side, so it's here. Um, I'm not sure if I actually want it to be on the south side, but anyway, this is a kind of cool little. Uh, yeah, a little a little glimpse of it. Um, awesome. So I don't need to worry about Barovia so much, but I do need to do another Word document for the Zare Pool Falls. Okay. Zare Pool Camp. All right, so the Zare Pool Camp. Um, and I'm going to do uh, Antiqua. Ooh, Antiqua. We'll do a little, a little that. All right, so the Zare Pool Camp. I have my notes on this, actually, because I was doing some, some writing, and uh, I have a little bit of information there about what's going on. So I have some of the people. Um, now, I had talked earlier about what was going with Madame Eva. Um, Madame, Madame Eva. Now, she's in a trance, and she's trapped in it. She's been trapped in a dream, essentially. Has been trapped in a trance 
by Baba Saga and cannot awake. The Nubistani of Barovia are divided on what to do without her guidance. At the Zare Pool camp, are the following Vistani. So we have first the leader of the group who is Uncle Stanimir. Uncle Stanimir. Uh, the uncle, the brother of the mother of the three Vistani in Barovia town. Friendly, but worried. Uncle Stanimir. I'm going to have to come up with a picture for him. I don't have him. And then we have um, his cousin, Damia the Dancer. Spy for Lugash. His lover. Um, Lugash, um, sorry, Luvash. Luvash is the Vistani, or the Vistana, who um, he's one of the main ones working for um, Rahadin. So Luvash is the brother of the guy out in um, uh, in Velaki. That's where he is based a lot of the time, but he travels all around because he's a servant of, of Rahadin and really is a servant of Strahd. So Luvash is the one who captured or who tricked Gertruda and uh, sold her out to, this, to the, the cult. He is the one who is currently, he's a werewolf. He is the one who is currently attacking Irina and trying to get her. So uh, Damia, they do have a connection. Uh, so at the Zerpool Falls, there is someone there who knows. But Damia is not going to give that up and she's not. They're not going to give Dami up because, you know, she's a Vistan. Uh, uh, and then her brother, uh, Ratka, the hunter. Um, bit, oops, bit by a wolf, not a werewolf. But fears he will change. Uh, terrified of Lubash. So Ratka is the brother of Damia. He knows who Lubash is. He knows what he's doing, but he's been bitten by a wolf. He thinks he's a werewolf, or he thinks he's going to become one. He's terrified of Lubash, and, and, you know, fearing and hoping, and he doesn't know what to do. Then uh, his wife, and I'm doing it kind of this way, so there's a connection, because I think these are family groups, right? The Vistani are family groups, so I wanted to have these connections already built in. Uh, we have Grilsha, the merchant. She's the one who runs things uh, in the merchant side of it. Um, greedy, but honest and cheerful. Okay, Grilsha. She's greedy, but she's honest and cheerful. She's not going to cheat you. And then her sister uh, is Drasha. Um, her sister is Drasha. Um, then there's Laszlo and Tareska, who are young lovers. And then there's Zolt, who is a loner. So those are the Vistani currently at the camp. One, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight um, that are named. And if I need to come up with more, I can. Um, so this is what's going on. And then of course, Madam Eva. Madam Eva's tent is a uh, wagon, is completely off limits to outsiders. They will Vistani other than Damia 
will uh, Damia and Zolt will die to defend her. Um, so, uh, Baba Lisaga has cursed Eva so that she cannot warn anyone or help in the um, overthrow of Strahd or prevent his return. So um, that's something that could happen here, right? Is that they could get a, uh, an audience with Eva somehow. I don't know how that's going to happen. Um, but they could do like, you know, some sort of dream. Um, the players could do a trance, a dream quest to find Eva and get her help. Um, she would tell them to stop the witch and wake her. So that's something. Players could do a trance. Uh, that's something that could come up. Um, a dream quest, basically, to help to enter into Eva's vision with her. Um, none of the other ones can do it. For whatever reason, they haven't been able to, but maybe these outsiders can, for some reason. Um, let's see. The Vistani are mostly in a panic. And then uh, I would say there are 25 other Vistani. And I'll have to come up with names. 25 other Vistani. So Adam, Madam Eva's wagons can now outsiders of the Stani other than Damian full die defender. So like, this isn't some place you just attack. This is not some place you just go into. The Stani are mostly in a panic as their people are divided about whether to help Strahd uh, Rahadin or not. Those at the camp are mostly afraid to ask questions, talk about it openly, or even choose a side. They hope Eva will, they hope it will just go away, or they want to travel away from Barovia. So that's the current decision. Do we leave Barovia? Do we stay? Um, Stanimir wants to stay until Eva wakes. Um, I would say there's probably some others amongst the group who want to leave. Grill Show wants to leave, uh, but I'll figure that out as we go. You know, it'll kind of have to play it as we go. So this is what's going on. I know at the Zerpool camp. I'm going to save that uh, Zerpool camp. I'm just going to save it. Okay. Um. Awesome. Uh, oh, all right. Just save a copy. Uh, let's see, you're going to go here, campaigns, uh, we're doing Legacy of Strahd, uh, and then where was this? This was in Location Details and Maps and Zerpool Falls, Zerpool Camp. Okay, cool. So there it is. Um, great. Awesome. Well, that's that's basically it. It's a recap of last session. I already have the church all developed. I know the Zerpool. Uh, I'm not going to develop the cistern because they haven't even talked about it yet. And I am not going to develop the death house because they're not going to go there, I don't think. I mean, they're not going to bother. They have so much to do. And we're not going to get there in the two hours, three hour session that we're going to have. So this should suffice for my next session. I have the Zerpool camp figured out. I know what's going to happen in Barovia. And I have the dungeon of the church. So they can go and explore that and fight as much as they want there. All right, cool. Well, I hope this has been helpful. Um, we're going to see how the game goes uh, tomorrow. Um, I'm definitely going to keep doing this series, though, so uh, keep with me if you guys are interested. See you all later.